Hello there and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial brought to you by Acres HD. And in today's lesson what we're going to be learning is how to create this cool intro within Cinema 4D using PolyFX. So you can see we've got the PolyFX going on where we've got all these little shattered pieces coming together. And we've got some nice reflection on the letters. And it's pretty simple to do. So let's head on into cinema and see what we can do. So if I just open cinema here, you can see how this is set up. I've got my main text in the middle. And I've got a couple of soft boxes from Nick from Grayscale Gorilla. If you don't know about Nick from Grayscale Gorilla, Search in Google, he does loads of really cool Cinema 4D products and tutorials, really cool, go check him out. So on to today's lesson, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete these and start afresh, but I'm just going to leave the soft boxes in just to make everyone's life a little bit easier. So now all we've got is two soft boxes in the scene and we are ready to go. So first off I'm going to go to MoGraph, add a Mo text name this acres and the font that I used was Helvetica new and I think it might have been the bold Helvetica new bold yep I think it was that one and I'm just gonna change the horizontal spacing just so it's closer together there's about good and I'm gonna scale it up to around 250 and I'm also going to change the alignment to the middle just so it's in the center and I'm going to increase the depth to around 50 just to give it some more depth so it's thicker and when the pieces shatter there's a lot more sort of pieces of the typography to work and shatter so the thicker it is the, the better it will probably turn out now that's not a guarantee but I prefer to have thick letters. Now all I'm going to do is click on the Mo text again and go to caps, uh, change the caps to fillet cap, change the radius to around 3 and that's all good. I'm just going to re rename this acres so we don't get confused and I'm going to copy and paste this and we're going to name this one designs. I'm just going to click on this one go to the object and rename it designs there we go might need to just resize this a little bit just so it's all in line round there is good and I'm just going to move the acres above like so now what I'm going to do is make a new green shiny green material so I'm going to go to new material going to open this up and we're going to have sort of a nice lime green sort of colour so around that's good maybe a bit more yellow there we go and we want to go on reflection usual, usual reflections texture for now and we're just going to turn the mix strength down just a little bit and that's good to go and if we drop though that texture that we just made onto our text object and if we hit render now you can see because we've added the caps and I've also got the soft boxes above we get this really nice reflection on the letters so if I just jump out of here, you can see I've got the soft boxes here. Don't worry if you haven't got Grayscale Gorilla's light kit. You can do this by just either adding a plane and then adding a luminous texture to it. Or you can do it with normal lights. But I find the Grayscale Gorilla light kit works exceptionally well for this kind of stuff. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to add poly effects, which is the main effect we'll be using today. And that can be found under the MoGraph tab, right at the bottom here, poly effects. And we're going to need two of these because we have two MoGraph texts. 
So I'm just going to add another one there. I'm going to drop the first one into the Acresmo text and then the second one drop it onto the Designs Mo text. So that's all good. And now what we need to do is add a random effector. And the random effector's going to break up all the poly effects. So if we if we look at the poly effects now, they're not actually doing anything, but if we go on to transform, you can see how the letters will be breaking up, but we're not going to do it on the poly effects. We're going to add a random effector to the poly effects so then we control the poly effects with the random effector. So I'm going to select the first poly effects, hold down command on Apple computers and select the second poly effects. And now I'm going to go to the MoGraph tab, effectors and random effector. And you can see straight away that breaks it all up. So if we go on to the fall off, change the shape to a sphere and um, we're going to move this to the center and if we just hit T on the keyboard this allows us to rescale the fall off so you want it just to cover the the majority of the text like so and maybe stretch it out that way and if we click on the random effector go to coordinations that allows us to move the the fall off and the random effector to go through it but we're not going to be doing that today we're going to keep it in the center and what we're going to do is under the parameter of the random effector we have the x y and z parameters and the default sets of 50 but we can move these and stretch them out and play around. So I'm just going to bump the X all the way up, bump the Y all the way up, and bump the Z all the way up. So all these little particles are really sort of out the way. And you can also add scale, or you can add a rotation. So you can do that by checking the rotation box, and then if we move rotation H you can see that they start to rotate and there's loads of stuff you can do with this I encourage you to play around with your own settings see what works best for you because you might want to do it another way so always experiment don't just follow the tutorial exactly play around with your own colors your own effects sort of thing so that's pretty much the random effector now and what we're going to do is go back onto the fall off and if we change the weight of the fall off you can see we get that effect so if at 100 the particles are all displaced and if we start to bring the weight on the random effector down you can see we start to get that really cool effect where they all come and meet in the middle and that's why we left the random effector in the middle and why we haven't moved it over like so because if we have it there and then move the weight down it all sort of comes back to that center point so I'm just going to add a keyframe I'm going to hold down control and add a keyframe to the weight on the random effector actually we want to move to zero on the timeline then add a keyframe at 100% move to the end of the timeline move the weight down to zero hold down control and click the keyframe button again so if we play now there we go now I'm just going to add a camera in here just to make it that little bit more sexy so if we click the black box by the camera to make it white that will allow us to see what the camera is seeing so around here I'm going to position the camera just close to the floor sort of looking up at the text to give that to give the effect that the text is really huge if you know what I mean so 
200 frames, the last frame on your timeline, you want to click on the camera and click on this button here, which is the keyframe button. And if we click that and then move to zero on the timeline, I'm just going to spin around and just position the camera to the left side and hit that keyframe button again. And if we play now, we get that really cool dynamic camera movement as well. So if we render this now, that's pretty much all good. There was one more thing that I added, which was a background. So we can do this by clicking this tab up here, adding a background, and then we're once again going to add a new material. Click on color, texture, and we're going to add a gradient. And if we click on the gradient, we want to change it from 2D U to 2D circular. And we're going to change the black to a sort of really dark green or whatever color theme your, your project is. It doesn't have to be green. So that's good. And we're going to change the white to a black. So we get that cool gradient effect and we're just going to turn off specular we don't need specular and then all you have to do once you've made that new material is drag it onto the background and if we render now you can see we get that really cool background that really nice gradient background with the sexy reflections and the poly effects so that pretty much wraps it up for today's tutorial and don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe and I will see you again very soon in another video tutorial. Thanks for watching guys, catch you later.